To draw this guy with accurate perspective, I'm gonna need to show you two perspective tricks, the X and the X-ray. The X-ray helps us find hidden planes, and the X helps us find the perfect center of any rectangle. Let's start with the X. Once I start drawing the Minecraft character, you'll see how useful finding a midpoint is to keeping things aligned and the right size. If I'm looking at this rectangle straight on, right, it's not in perspective, I'm just looking right at it. If I connect the corners with an X, they intersect right in the middle. Knowing this, we can always find the midpoint as long as we know the four corners. So if I wanna find the center here, if I just eyeball it, the tendency is gonna be for us to put it too far over towards the bigger, the closer side. So like if I just look at it like this and I kind of put it in the middle between these two lines, so there's my guess. And now watch what where it actually is if I use this X to find the true center. Look at that, it's all the way over here. So this side of the cabinet is gonna appear a lot larger than this, because this one is farther back. We already know this. But the amount of how much that diminution is happening is uh, not very intuitive for most people when they start drawing perspective. And so this is just a great way to train yourself to see just how much things actually get smaller as they go back. All right, so let's start drawing our Minecraft character. And I'm gonna show you the X-ray a little bit later in this video. So just for simplicity, I'm gonna put my vanishing points visible on the page, just horizontally across from each other. I'm gonna draw Steve. I'm seeing a little bit more of his front than the side. And so I'm gonna put that closest edge a little bit more to the left, something like that. And I'm just gonna draw a simple cube representing his torso. Nothing special. I'm gonna speed through this. Just eyeballing these lines converging towards the vanishing point. Now I know that his legs are about twice as tall as his torso. So because this is two point perspective, the vertical axis is not converging either way. And so it's not getting smaller as it goes up or down. To kind of double this distance, I literally just need to take that and double it. And then down here, the convergence is gonna start getting a lot more extreme. All right, so I doubled this height and those are his legs. So you'll see once I start adding the arm, it's not quite so simple to extend something that is converging, that is in perspective getting smaller or bigger. Now to find the center point, the split between the two legs, I'm just gonna do that exact same thing I did with the cabinet. So this is just a little bit bigger than this one. It's not extreme because I'm not converging and it's not going into the distance as much, as aggressively as that cabinet was that I drew. But it is still, like I could see that this is wider than that. You can see that more clearly once I remove the illusion of perspective. Okay, so now I'm gonna attach the arms and I want the arms to be exactly half of the torso width. In order to do that, let's first find what is half. Or, well, actually, we already found that here, so we can just extend it up. We don't need to draw another X if we could just go like that. And if you want, you can very lightly just double check it. And notice how I'm drawing these X's very lightly. These are just construction lines. They're not meant to be there forever. Now I'm gonna extend the arm, and if I want to double a distance, I can use the same X trick, but it's just a different take on it. So let's go back to that cabinet. So if I want to double this, what I could do is I could say, okay, well, the midpoint is now this, right? Like if I doubled this rectangle shape, then this will now be the new center. So if that's the center, then what I can do is I can draw an X from this corner out, and that will take me to the other corner. So I don't need to actually know the four corners. I can know two corners and a midpoint, and that can help me find the other two corners. So where they intersect with these horizontals is now our edge. That is double of this one. So let's do the same thing, but now to something that's actually in perspective. So I wanna say that this arm back here is the same width as this. I'm not just gonna double it. I'm going to find the midpoint and then extend my X up and same thing down 
very lightly, very clean. A little bit of deviation in any direction can set you off to be wrong in this. And then also I have to converge this, extend the, this angle out towards the vanishing point to get me a new edge. And there you go. So this is just a little bit smaller than that. And extend from here out. Same thing from here like that. And that tells me the length of this arm. See that? It's noticeably bigger than this one. So these are going into space because as we get closer and closer to this vanishing point, that size increase is going to become more and more exaggerated. Like, for example, let's just pretend we're going to do another segment here. If I was to extend this, I'm going to do it really lightly. Look at that. <laughs> it, this one would be all the way over here. That's pretty big. That's quite a bit bigger than this one. So they're going to get bigger and bigger. And then as we get closer to the vanishing point, it just gets very distorted. So all of that is to say that when you're doing these, don't make your vanishing points like super close to the thing you're drawing. You do need some distance in order to prevent your things from being super distorted as you expand them out. All right, now I just need to find the depth of this arm. But then wait a minute, where do I put this? How thick is this? Well, this is where X-ray vision comes in. There's a lot of perspective stuff coming up, so make sure you're subscribed. As always, a bunch of these lessons are gonna be free, but if you want the complete experience with all the extended lessons, projects, demos, and critique videos, you can join at any time at proka.com slash drawing. Just like how we can see through this arm to see the back of the torso. We constructed the entire torso in order to get the legs in here. It was really useful for us to know where the back edge of that torso was so that we can extend all of this correctly. So now it's gonna be very useful for us to know where the back edge over here is extending from this corner out. That will tell us this corner. So to my vanishing point, and I'm gonna do that lightly because this is, I'm like pretending that I have x-ray vision. This is made out of glass or I have x-ray vision. <laughs> and then the same thing over here, very lightly. I don't want the back edges to become more dominant than the front edges. All right, so now I found these corners. And again, let's darken some of these front visible things. So the unseen edges, I'll definitely want to be lighter. Otherwise, it becomes a little difficult for the viewer to understand what's actually in front, what's behind. And you get this weird illusion sometimes where the viewer's mind will actually flip them thinking the back edge is in front and it just looks really weird. Okay, so there's an arm and it looks pretty massive, right? Because I'm starting to get pretty close here. It's starting to look like uh, the camera is just really close to him. The reason I chose to do this to kind of make this really extreme perspective is because it's much more easy to see the difference between the two sides the, where the midpoint is. It's not right in the middle. It's gonna be a little bit farther back. So next thing to do is put the, his head on and his head is more of a block, like a cube. And so it's gonna be a little bit deeper in this Z axis. So I have to kind of extend it forward in front of the torso a little bit here. And sometimes it's really important to rotate your sketchbook so that you get a, you know, a comfortable angle for your arm to draw a straight line. Okay, so there's that kind of bottom lip. And then the, the front of the face will come up from here. Now to find the back of the head, this is another spot where using our extra vision is gonna be really helpful. Cause I don't know where to put it unless I figure out where that bottom corner is. From this back corner here, I can extend it down kind of a similar amount here. I don't need to measure that to be perfect or anything but I could visually see a little bit smaller than this towards the back. And now from there, from that back corner, I can go up and now I know where that's supposed to be in order to come off that torso backwards the same amount as forwards or roughly the same amount because I want the head to sit kind of in the middle of that torso. All right. Now I want the, the front of the face to be kind of a cube-like, but I'm gonna try to eyeball it. So this right now is wrong. This 
looks like it's wider than it is tall and it should actually appear taller than it is wide because this foreshortening is making it smaller this way as it goes back. And so it should be the opposite of what I drew. So I need to extend this height even more. And so now visually to me that appears more like a perfect square close to a square in the front. And all the stuff that you find during your extra vision, like you can knock that back again with an eraser, feel like it's starting to get in the way. I don't mind it in, some, in these sketches, but if they start to get distracting, you can totally just knock them back, but they're very useful while you're constructing and finding things. Now you can use the combination of an X and X-ray vision to extend something from the center of an unseen plane. Like I don't have any space up here above the head, but let's say I was trying to extend something from right from the middle of his head, like a little rectangle hat or something. I can go from this corner and draw a very, very light line going to the vanishing point. And by the way, when I draw these lines going to the vanishing point, I'm not just considering the vanishing point. I'm also looking at the, the lines near, like the neighboring lines, and I'm trying to make sure that this is kind of in between those, right? That helps me, but the vanishing point, I kind of start there, do that, and then see like, okay, is that close to being between these? And then I kind of narrow in with my intuition. Same thing in here, starting this way, and then looking at these two angles. So now I drew this plane over here, and that's the top of his head. If if this box was made out of glass or we had x-ray vision, we would see this top, it's like a ceiling, right? The inside ceiling. And if I wanted to find the middle of that ceiling, I just need to draw an X. And now I know that the, the midpoint is right there. And so if I want to draw a little rectangle going up, then I could decide right on here, how big is that uh, the bottom plane of this box that I'm gonna extend. And so now I've found a smaller version of this right in the middle. And then from there, I would be able to extend it up if I was drawing a little hat up here or something. Now you can get really granular with this. You can use this to find more details of things like some kind of repeating pattern on a building or something. For example, his face, it's an eight by eight grid of pixels. And so that's perfect. We could divide it in half three times and then we'll have an eight by eight grid on the face that we can draw in. I'm gonna find this X like this. So I know that this is the center. And then right in here is the center this way. And this one's actually a little bit easier to dissect because because it's two point perspective, I could just find half here, half here. And that'll give me this midpoint. Okay, so now I have the midline, I could divide that each of these parts into four pieces. So if I just take one of these, draw another corner, it tells me that right there is a division. Draw another angle here, there's a division. And so you can see they're slowly getting smaller and smaller. And for the next one, I mean, I can keep drawing X's, but eventually the drawing gets so small that like my margin of error is for drawing this X is probably greater than the actual size of the, <laughs> the segments. So at this point, I would just eyeball it. I would say like right there and right there, there and there. And now I have my eight. This one's a lot easier because I just divide them in half. So now this little bullseye kind of shape tells me the entire grid. And then from there, I can start drawing his face. So let's do that. So then I can draw the eyes, the nose, the beard, the hair, putting it all on that grid. And I see when I shade this all in, all of these construction lines back in here are just gonna disappear. And there you go, you got Steve minus the clothing. So let's throw in a few lines in here, just converge them towards that vanishing point, you got sleeves, and same thing over here, converge that up, and you'll have his shoes. 
So go ahead, give it a try. Uh, if you do draw it, please share your work in the Proco community. The link is in the description below. As you do this more and more, you're gonna become a lot better at it. The perspective will become more and more intuitive to you. Um, and if you want more fundamental drawing lessons, consider looking at my drawing basics course over at proco.com slash drawing. In there, I'm taking you from line to shape, perspective, and then values and edges and we start shading and rendering light on form. And so it encompasses a very, very large portion of the fundamentals so you can speak the visual language. So head over to proko.com slash drawing, check it out, and I'll see you next time.